All right, welcome to Web Components Are Easier Than You Think. I assure you, they're not even half as scary as a horde of cyborg zombies. Okay, before we get started, go ahead and open up this link. It's gonna have information for you, like the slides. It'll have some, some articles I've written on Web Components that you can access later. It'll also have a link to a starter WordPress plugin where you can add Web Components to your, to your website. So take a look at that, take a second to grab it, and I'll also try to put it in the chat and then we'll get started. So what is a web component? A web component brings together a couple different technologies, some JavaScript, some CSS, some, some HTML based, and brings them all together to create custom elements, custom HTML elements, so that you can use them throughout your website or through multiple websites, etc. Web components come in two flavors. First of all, there's autonomous custom elements. And these are uh, what we think of when we think of custom elements, or whatever you want to name them, as long as they have a dash in the middle, and they're, they can do whatever you want them to do. But there's also customized built-in elements, and these are like special forms of the div element, or special forms of the image element. They're a way of taking a built-in element and customizing it for your own purposes. There are changes to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the HTML part of it are two different elements. One is the template element, and so this is going to hold all of the content that is going to be in your web component, at least if you're adding anything through the Shadow DOM, which we'll talk about in a second. Next thing is the slot element, and the slot element is actually sort of how you'll put information in different slots. So you'll have a, a slot element in your template, and then you'll have slot attributes in your custom element that will then match up different types of data with their different slot. We'll talk about this more in a minute. It's encapsulated CSS, meaning that it will all be within the web component. It won't spill out or cascade out to other elements outside of your web component. So it's really great for having it across multiple websites. It's not going to directly affect anything around the, the web component. All right, and there's also some JavaScript portions. Two big concepts here. One is that we're going to extend the HTML element class. Now, this is for autonomous custom elements. Customized built-in elements actually will extend a particular HTML element. Oddly enough, autonomous custom elements have greater and wider support. Customized built-in elements don't work in Safari, but work pretty much everywhere else. So we'll be focusing on autonomous custom elements, but autonomous custom elements all extend the generic HTML element, whereas a customized built-in element would extend whatever element class you are working with. So div, HTML div element, HTML image element, those sorts of things. Second thing here I mentioned earlier is the shadow DOM, and it is like the, the document object model, but it's sort of a separate thing. It's, it has kind of a clandestine name, but really it's a simple sort of like a, a self-enclosed DOM that is going to be attached to another element. All right, so let's take a look at how some of this will work. This is just uh, from CodePen. We have just some, some starter HTML here. We have an H1, which is our H1 here, a class of profiles, which is where we're gonna stick all of our zombie profiles. And then we have a template element here that we will start putting our, our content into or our HTML elements that will then become part of the Shadow DOM. We'll see how that works here in a second. The CSS here that's available, I just import a, a font, Libra Franklin, and then I apply you know, border box. I apply the font to the body. I align the H1 to the center. I have some setup here for the different profiles or for the, the profiles element here, just that it will display flex and, and stuff will appear in it. And there's a margin right 2M on the odd nth childs. And we'll look at that here in a second. That's just preparing us for when we start putting some uh, profiles in here. Give us some space there. Now the JavaScript here, this is, this is probably the, the most confusing part or the, the uh, most interesting part perhaps. So we have custom elements dot define. So we're defining a custom element. That's what uh, we're doing with a web component. I have named my custom element zombie profile here. And that is what will appear within the angle brackets. So as I, if we go over here to the HTML, this is what my custom element will look like. And then of course a closing closing tag. Now this of course is not going to show anything down here yet because we haven't done anything to create a template, we haven't done anything to put content in it, so it's just a blank element currently. 
So that's the title of our element. Class, you can set a class name, or because we're doing it within this custom elements, you wouldn't actually have to have the, the word zombie profile there. But again, it's going to extend HTML element. We're going to have a constructor. So when it's created, it's going to run a few things. Super ensures that it grabs all of the, the different features and things from the element that is above it that it's extending. Uh, so HTML element in this case. We're going to create a profile variable. We're going to grab from the template here. So whatever HTML elements and such and content are in the template, we're going to grab that and stick it in profile. Currently, there's nothing in there, but we'll start adding stuff in just a moment. Then we're going to take profile.content. So we're taking the content of profile. We're sticking in a new variable, my profile. And then we're going to be creating a shadow root. So this is part where we do the shadow DOM. And we are just creating sort of its own DOM within what will end up being within this zombie profile. And it, it again, uh, similar to the, the CSS, it's encapsulated. So it is within what it will be within the zombie profile. And you won't really be able to access it too much from outside of it. But we'll talk about some of that more as well. So we create the shadow root. We are attaching the shadow root to, in this case, the zombie profile. Mode is open. Open and close are the only two options here. Generally, you just stick with open. I think it's been shown that close is not really that much different, even, even if it, in theory, should be. So stick with open for now. And then we're appending the child. We're appending the, a clone of the profile here setting it true. So that's going to take a shadow DOM and attach it, excuse me, that's going to create a shadow DOM and attach it to the zombie profile element. And it will also take care of slotting in all your different content. So let's start building out our template. To do that, I'm going to just start copying in some, some elements here and I'll talk about them. I could type them, but that would take forever. All right, we're going to start out here. I'm just closing off the div before I forget. So we're going to start out here with a profile wrapper. Div class profile wrapper. It's just going to be wrapped around our profile. We have a slot here. We've named the slot profile image. If there's no content given, then the image will be this image source equals um, and this default.png. We have set the alt text to nothing and then closing the slot. We have a close of the profile pick div here. And as you just saw that load, this is the default.png. So we are taking the, from this zombie profile, we are taking the template, of this content, profile wrapper. We are then attaching or putting in this profile pick. This slot, we don't actually have anything slated for the slot. So it's going to use the default, which is what we have here, which is this image default.png, which is this little shadowy image. And closing the slot, closing the div for profile pick, closing the div for profile wrapper. So as we continue through, you'll start to see this information get updated down here. So the next section here, we're going to start by adding a name for the, our zombie. All right, so I have a class of info. I have an H2. Within that H2 is a slot named Zombie Bob. Again, we have no content in this thing yet, so it's going to use the defaults. So we have Zombie Bob there. I'm just going to add a closing div to the info before I forget it. And things go wild, and I can't figure out how to get this thing to work. Next thing we're going to add is the zombie's age. All right, we just have a span here with a class of age. We have a span a class label of age. And then we have the slot, which we've named Z age. Default here is 37 and closing of the slot. As you can see here, we have age 37. I'm just going to add a couple things at once here to speed us up a little bit. So I've added a couple things here. I've added an infection date. Span class of infection date around the whole thing. We have a span of label around infection date. We have a slot named iDate. We have a default infection date and a closing slot. 
closing the span that surrounds them both. Here we have the interests. Interests are, of course, in a list, an unordered list. So we have a class of label, interests. We have a slot name of Z interests. Within that slot, we have our UL with some LIs in it, closing slot, closing div for the interests. We also are going to have an, ap an apocalyptic statement. So we have a span around our statement. We have a label around apocalyptic statement. And then we have the statement. The default statement is just a moan. So there we have our default. All of the default information is being put in there properly. The next thing to do is to add some actual content. I'm going to add a zombie profile that already has all of the slots built in and figured out. So here we've got opening zombie profile tag. We have our image. Notice the slot attribute is profile image, which is the same as the, the slot name down in our template. We have this uh, source for our, our image, so mona.png. Uh, within this span, we have a slot of zombie name. Again, that is related to your slot element and its name down there. We have a part which is useful, but not necessarily right now. We have Mona. We have our span slot Z age of 25. Notice how it's updated from the default here. So instead of Zombie Bob, we have Mona. Instead of uh, 37, we have 25. Instead of infection date of September 12, 2025, we have October 15, 2027, etc. Our slot for Z is our Z interests. So we have a UL including her interests, rotary phones, human sports, brains, what, what zombie isn't interested in brains. And then we have her statement here, phone and fancy, fancy free lady looking for a zombie with all its limbs. And the statement gets slotted in as well. All right, let's add another profile just to show you again how this works. We'll add it in right after Mona. All right, here we have Leroy. We have his image, you know, slot of profile image, Leroy.png, span, slot, zombie name, Leroy, age, infection date, interests, and statement. Again, if we go back down to our template, we look at our slots. We have, our, of course, our slot name of Z interests, which is the slot attribute on the UL that's in Leroy's zombie profile, etc. I'm going to go ahead and add some styles to our template. All right, again, the slot, the styles that I'm adding in our HTML template, I'm adding through a style element. And those CSS styles cannot leak out into the rest of the web page. They will only affect the different uh, zombie profiles. And I'll go through some of what these are. Let me also add here a few styles that could not be otherwise encapsulated. So here we have our image. Um, I have it both set as the image and the slotted image because if I didn't have the image there, it wouldn't work on the default image here. But slotted image, since this was an image that was slotted in, it works on this. It's setting the width to 100%, but the max width to 300 pixels, height of auto, and adding some margin around it. Same thing with Mona here. Our H2, we're setting a font size of 3M. If there is another H2, it would not be affected by this. Setting margin and line height, etc. We have some H3s, setting the font weight to normal, setting some margins on them. For our age and infection date, we're displaying them as blocks, so they're in a row here. Even though they were on spans, we're setting the line height for the span. A label color of gray which you can see is a little bit lighter here now. LI, UL, and slotted UL are supposed to be displayed inline. 
That is not super working for me. So the, the way this ends up working is that the Shadow Dom is not technically within the technically within the zombie no wait that's not right there it looks a lot better now and we should be all set all right now that we have our CSS in place I'm going to add a few more profiles here just as more examples and add them before the default All right, there we have six different profiles all working together to hang out on a zombie dating service. There are three major ways that we can implement web components in WordPress. First of all, we have using it in the editor. Second, we could output with a theme or from a theme. And third, we could output from a block. Before we look at the first one, we have a couple of prerequisites. So whether we're adding them in the editor, through a theme, or through a block, we need to do these three things before we can ensure that they will work wherever we want to use them. So first one is we need to add the HTML to the footer. So the HTML template should be in the footer. There are other ways to include it, but in the footer is probably one of the easiest. And here is some code to do that. You would just create a function do it yourself easy web comp footer. You would print or echo the template code here, you know, the temp template element and everything within it. And then you just add this action to the WP footer. And then as long as your theme uses WP footer, it will output every time you need it to. Second prerequisite is to enqueue any un unencapsulated styles. You might have better luck and be able to fully encapsulate your styles, but if you can't, then you need to enqueue them within WordPress to make sure that they take effect. You can do that with a simple enqueue style. I gave it a name of easy web comp style. I'm giving it a location. In this case, I had the easy web comp.css in the template directory. If you're using a plugin or something else, this may not be the right path, but this is the, the path to my current file, giving it a version and telling it which medium to use. The third prerequisite is to enqueue your JavaScript, which you will definitely need to do. And here is, again, a, a simple enqueue script function. So we named easy web comp underscore JS. Again, I put this in my template or in within my theme folder, which may or may not be where you want it. And then there was a JS folder within the theme. And then easy web comp .js is in there, version 1.0 and true meaning load it near the bottom. All right, using web components in the editor. The thing you wanna make sure is that you don't filter them out. So uh, administrators of course have unfiltered HTML, but pretty much everybody else has some form of filtered HTML in the editor, even with Gutenberg and the block editor. So what you have to do is tell WordPress that these tags are okay. You can do that with the KSS allowed HTML hook a function, it takes the allowed tags. I'm creating, within the allowed tags array, I'm creating an entry called zombie profile, whose uh, content is an array. Then for each of those allowed tags, as ampersand dollar tag, we wanna of course make sure that we are not just updating a reference, but we're actually updating the thing itself, which is why the ampersand's there. Take a tag we will need the slot attribute. We don't want it to, to clear out the slot attribute, so we want to set that to true. And if you need the part attribute, you also want to set that to true. And this will actually go through all of the allowed tags and add those two attributes to it. And then we can return the allowed tags. And of course, we need to add the filter to WP KSS allowed HTML, um, and then it should prevent most filtering. Now, there is a catch, uh, there is a, uh, an issue here. First of all, you would think that this could work within the code editor. Um, this is a, an editor that is used for allowing you to edit the code within blocks. The problem is this has, still has a formatter that runs, and 
does not always understand zombie, or excuse me, does not always understand zombies, does not always understand custom elements. And so when you have this, when you add these to the code editor, and it, it will work if you have only inline elements within your custom element. But as you saw, I had a UL in my custom element, and for whatever reason, when there is a block level element, it takes the closing custom element tag and moves it up before that element. I don't know why. Uh, there's not a way to override this at this time. There is, however, a workaround, and that's to use the custom HTML block. Um, so if you use that, it will process properly. It won't mess up your tags or play with them. And you can just use that. It'd be nice if you could do it directly in, in Code Editor, but that, alas, is not working at this time. And you can't override it the way you do with the case S. Right, outputting to a theme. Now, of course, if you are just outputting directly to a theme and you don't need any user input or anything like that, then you just output it um, as long as you have the, uh, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, well, all of those that you need in place, then you should be good to go. However, you may want to make it so that it's easier for a user to update. So one of the, one of the ways to do this through a theme is to use uh, some of the fields you already have. So you can use the title. Here I'm using the title as the name of the zombie. I'm using the, the block or body content as their statement. Use the featured image to grab their image. I'm going to use the built-in custom fields that WordPress has to set the age, infection date, and interests. So those things that are needed, the other content that's needed, but I don't automatically have a, a way to add. So here's the code for that. We start with our opening zombie profile. We have an image. We're going to grab the attachment image from the URL. So we're grabbing the, the URL of the image that is the, the post thumbnail. So we're giving the post thumbnail ID, handing it to WP get attach image URL, and then putting that URL in the source. And we have the slot of profile image. Next, we have a span. Again, we have our slot with our name. We echo the title. Then we have our age, and we can get the post meta using the ID, the name of the custom field. So then we have a span for our infection date and for our interests, and also for our statement um, where we play our, where we echo get the content. And then we have a closing zombie profile so that you can put these in, say, your index.php or whatever makes sense and then output them one after another, making the user input much easier than expecting non-technical non people to type in very technical things. But another one that I think is particularly interesting is output from a block. So you'd like to be able to you know, click on the plus button, look for something, and then have a profile all ready for you. So you have a spot for name, a spot for age, a spot for all those different things. There's two main portions. There's the PHP and there's the JavaScript. This is the PHP where we're just registering the scripts that will run this. So we're setting up an easy web comp, the uh, JS file that, that's going to have it, uh, what are the, the dependencies are, and we're grabbing that particular file, block.js. And of course, we are registering the block. We can register styles to it, easy web comp, and then the plugins URL. If this were a plugin, and then you know the, the file m time to find a particular file, and then we're registering the block type as uh, Easy Web Comp Zombie Profile, and we're including an editor style and an editor script. So that is so that it looks good um, when you are editing it, um, and not just on the front end. Then we just add the action to the init, and we're good to go. So the code for the JavaScript portions of this is pretty involved. So I've tried to focus on the parts that are important here to talk about. There is a bit more that you'll need, but it's all laid out in my article, Using Web Components with WordPress is Easier Than You Think. Just to go over it quickly here, attributes is one of the main things that you'll be grabbing. Oh, I should also say this is ES5 code. When I wrote the article, I was trying to make sure that there weren't build steps or other ways that people could be prevented from understanding or getting access to creating these blocks. So I kept it in ES5. If you already know React or something like that, you can sort of figure it out from there. But 
Here we have sort of a attributes array. In that attributes object, adding my name, some name, I'm adding a media ID. This is for helping upload an image. The media URL, which is where the URL of the image is going to be, age, infection date, interests, and statements. Those are all the different pieces of our zombie profile. Within name, we have a type of string because that's the type of content that it is. The source of that is going to be text, which is the, the text of the element. So the way Gutenberg works is that it puts all of these elements on the page in the edit step, and then it will process those and change them from the sort of um, the edit version to a saved version. And the saved version is what actually goes in the database and actually what gets put out on the, the main website. But what's created in the edit section could be completely different and to a great extent is um, in the, the block that I'm creating because it's not already starting as a web component. You could do that. I chose not to do that because I, I think it would be a little bit simpler to understand. So this block in the edit section is going to be basically a list of, of elements, divs, and those sorts of things that we will then utilize, take the content from, and stick in our web component when we save it. So the attributes here, we have the name, it's a type of string, the source. So we'll actually be selecting the element with a Z name class. And we will then take the text of that element and stick it as a string into the name variable. So that's sort of what this ends up being. Media ID is a type of number. We will be getting that from the, uh, the content itself. We have a media URL. The media ID type number we'll be getting from uh, when, we, when we grab the image or when we upload the image. Media URL, similarly, will have a type of string. We're going to grab the source. is going to be from an attribute. The selector is going to be an image. So we're just grabbing the only image that we're going to use in the block. And then that attribute that we are grabbing for the source is the SRC attribute, which is the source URL for the image. Because we're going to be displaying the image, and then we're from that code that is displayed from that HTML that is rendered in the edit step, we will grab the content or grab the different information from it and then save that into our web component. Here we have age, type of string, source, I'm just grabbing the text again, and it's from an element uh, with a class of age. Uh, infect date, I'm setting a type of date, source is text, and selector is an element with an infection date class. Interests, this is going to be an array because it's going to be a, a number of li elements that we'll want to use. Source is going to be the children because I'm selecting the ul and grabbing each of those li's and sticking them in an array for interests. Similarly with statements, since statement could be multiple paragraphs of text, rather than grabbing just the text, I'm grabbing the children so that anything that's within it is going to also be preserved. So if there are multiple paragraph tags, for instance, it's going to be preserved as we save it in statement. Save it in an array. We're going to grab the children and stick. We're going to grab the children of the statement class element and stick them in an array. Uh, the other important thing here is the save function, and this is what actually will take the content that we are creating and setting up in the edit function and save it as a zombie profile element in the back end in the database. So we're grabbing attributes from props which is being passed to this function. And we're going to save it as attributes. We're going to return an element. That element will be a zombie profile. We're not adding, ad adding any attributes to that particular zombie profile right now. We're going to create an element called image. Not called an image, it's an image element. We're going to set the source to, the, the source, the source to be attributes.media URL. We're going to give it a slot attribute of profile image so that it can be slotted into the shadow DOM properly when we actually render the zombie profile creating another element that's a rich text element. So it's, it allows us to create text. We're going to give it a, a tag name of span, because it's, it's a span element that we want to create. We're going to give it a slot attribute of zombie name, a class name of Z name, and a value. We're going to grab the attributes.name. So the name that we have passed to attributes is what we will save as the, as the contents of the span that will be slotted into zombie name. Next here we have the age, similar to the zombie name here. We will be taking rich text content. We'll create a tag 
uh, span. We'll slot it into or give it a slot attribute of Z age, class name of age, and a value of attributes.age. So we're taking the age that we've saved into the attributes element or attributes variable, attributes object rather, uh, and storing that in a tag that is named span with a slot of slot attribute of Z age. Same thing goes here for infection date. Just the same, we have a span. We're giving it a slot attribute of I date, giving it a class of infection name, or excuse me, infection date. And then the infect date that we saved in the attributes object will be saved as the content of that span. And the last two here we have are creating an element, the tag name of UL. We're going to give it a slot attribute of Z interests, and we're giving it a value of attributes.interests. So the LI interests that we've saved will then be saved into a UL element in the web component. We have a, the last thing here is our statement. And similar to the interests and the other ones that we've talked about, we're giving it a, a tag name of span, giving a slot of statement, a class name of statement, and a value of attributes.statement. Now again, we'll take a look, if you haven't already, at this link. This will have, again, all of the information. Uh, it'll have the slides. It'll have, it'll have links to the code pens I used, particularly the stub that I started with, and then a final version so you can see the difference. It also has a links to the four articles that I've written thus far on Web Components at CSS Tricks that you can take a look at and gives much more explanation and, and can go deeper into what's going on with them. It has, has a link to a starter WordPress plugin that you can take and then modify to add your own web components. And it's actually, all of that is laid out in the WordPress Web Components article. Um, so you can take a look at the code. It's all annotated as well. But I also created that plugin so that you can start your own. And it has directions on how to take your own web component and add it to WordPress in the particular way you want. So thanks for listening. And I look forward to taking your questions and talking with you more about web components. Uh, and hopefully you found them easier than you thought.